Good morning. We gather during this epiphany season to receive all the Lord's blessings that He grants us in His appearance. And we thank and praise Him for those blessings. We begin this morning by singing the hymn of invocation. God, we can 
confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the mercy is given the Son to die for you and for your his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I will praise you with an upright heart. Blessed are those whose way is blameless. Blessed are those who keep his testimony. You are have commanded your precepts. All that my ways may be steadfast. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, as it was in the beginning. I will praise you with an upright heart.
spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so they did, their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did of the, the false prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We may be seated and we sing the hymn of the day. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. This is our text. 
As we read this Old Testament reading for today from Jeremiah, the crying prophet, the one who looked at the kingdom of Israel as it was being taken into exile, as it was being led off a nation to be chastised because they had in fact put their trust in man, put their trust in a nation to uh, take care of them, to defeat their enemies. And that nation had in fact done it, but then they thought for a moment and thought, you know, gee, this has cost us a lot of money, this uh, big campaign against Egypt and the northern kingdoms. And we're right here with this big army. So we might as well just take over this part of the nation too and make it our own and use these people as slaves. In Isaiah, he had told this people to trust in the Lord. Even at that late moment, at that time in history, where they were about to make the fatal mistake and put their trust in another nation, in other princes, in other men, he promised them if they would but turn to God, that God would relent, and God would be gracious and merciful, and God would grant them his care and his peace. But that had all gone by the wayside. And in this part of the Old Testament, in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verses 5 through 8, we hear about being cursed and being blessed. When we look at the world around us as things are today, it's certain the economy is uncertain. There seems to be political unrest. There is, of course, financial hardship. And as we can all tell, because we're still wearing masks and doing things to try to defeat a disease that seems to be, in some senses, undefeatable. That health and well-being are not what we would like them to be. We face great challenges. And the question comes to us as it comes to the people of Ju it came to the people of Judah. Where do we place our trust? Who do we go to? Who do we believe in? Who do we think is really going to take care of us? Well, of course, being good Christians. Being good Christians, the immediate answer is we turn to God. It's automatic. We don't think about it. But maybe we should. Not so much think about that answer as think about how we do that. It's amazing how many times in the last couple of months as Kathy and I have gone through some very difficult times and decisions, people have told us to have faith. Think about that for a second. How do you go about that? If you really think about it, you'll realize that the more you try to manufacture faith in something, the more you have doubts about it. Of course, we know from long experience that we have to turn to God for that too. Not only we have to turn to God to fulfill His promises, but we have to turn to God for faith in Him. For faith that where He is leading us is the best place. Even when it doesn't seem like it. Even when the nursing home we're putting her in is a dump with ugly walls. We have to dig deep in our understanding and realize that it's not what this place looks like. But the fact that God has put his people in this place, people whom we know, people whom we trust, to give our loved one care beyond and above what they normally would get, even in the most beautiful place. It still isn't easy. 
it still is disappointing and disheartening. I can well even remember that there were points in this whole decision process where I kind of told the joke, only half not meaning it, that I can't remember praying to God for a stronger faith or for patience because those are the two things that are hardest to receive from him. To have a stronger faith, all he can do is make you believe, make you have faith. Make you depend on him and nothing else. To have patience, as the joke goes, give me patience and give it to me right now. The only thing he can do is make you wait. But as we look at Jeremiah and as I look at this text and I look at all the things that he had said, it is sometimes easier to look at the world around us and look at all the ratings and look at all what people say about other people and to kind of want to put our trust in people instead of putting our trust in God to provide the people that will do his will and fulfill his, age, his, fill his promises as his agent. So let's look again at this. Let's look again at what God is saying. Jeremiah was at a time when people didn't have a lot of trust in God. After all, they're being led off in captivity to a foreign land. They're being told that after a generation they will come back and God will establish, reestablish everything. But it looks pretty grim. Behind them is the smoldering ruins of Jerusalem. The temple in shambles. And even though Jeremiah will not go into exile but will in fact flee into Egypt which in the Old Testament pretty much represents the world. Even the symbolism of this text seems to be counter. Because, in fact, if you look at this kingdom of that God had promised him, this promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, yeah, when you look around it, it's kind of dry and it doesn't seem like the milk and honey flows all that easily and when you look at Egypt with the Nile and the land that they were being ex uh, uh, yeah, exiled to with the Euphrates it seems like this planting of God by the waters that are never going to fail Sometimes seems like maybe we should trust in the world because that's where the waters seem to be. The Euphrates never dries up. If you've ever been to Egypt, right along there, there are palm trees right along the Nile River. Trees that are known for taking a lot of water. You go but a few miles from that river and everything is dry and dead. It must have been awfully hard for these people to hear Jeremiah proclaim, Trust in the Lord. There are times in our world today when we look around at everything that's happening, and it seems a little hard to us too. And it seems the people that are kind of trusting in all kinds of other things are the ones that are getting the best out of it. The ones that have all the neat stuff. The ones whose life seems to be sailing along. It isn't that way, believe me. It's not that way at all. But in this country, we kind of like to see things that way. It's just built into our culture. 
you don't believe it, all you have to do is look at our culture and look at the Russian culture. In our culture, no matter what, you know, when people ask you how things are going, no matter how things are going, they're at least going okay, if not great. We wouldn't want to admit that there are any challenges or difficulties. Life is going great for us. Listen to a person ask the same question who's a Russian. And no matter how great things are going for them, they'll tell you about what the warts look like and how terrible it really is. Because in their culture, you wouldn't want anybody else to think that you had plenty and that you were getting more than they had. So if you ask a Russian how things are going, he'll shake his head and say, Oh, it's just terrible. It's just terrible and it's getting worse. And as we all know, as we try to live out this life, there's a lot of kind of leeway from the everything's going great and everything's going terrible. And somewhere in the middle we kind of wiggle back and forth and live our lives. And in that kind of a situation, even a situation where really everything is going horrible. Like I said, the land you love is behind you. You're being ex either exiled or you're running away to another land. The temple is burning. The place where you get to get God's blessings doesn't even really operate anymore. Things aren't looking so good. And the prophet of God says, no matter how good it looks, don't trust in man. It ain't going to work out for you. Trust in God. Because in the end, his promises are sure. In the end, we know where we're going. In the end, no matter how much we grieve right now, God still will provide, and the blessings will still come. And our ending is still sure. And eternity still looks so amazing that we can't even believe it. Today again, God holds out his hand to you and says, It's all here for you. It's all here for you. For you, eternal life is going to be like living on the Nile River. It's like your tree is planted there. And the waters will never fail. And the hot sun will never scorch you. And I, as your God, will never abandon you or forsake you. As it says in the psalm, he doesn't even sleep or slumber. His foot never slips. If he says it, you can bet your bottom dollar that's what's going to happen. Once again, he assures us of that. And even at times when things are hard for us and challenging. And it looks real hard to find the happiness. We can still take joy in God because he will fulfill his promises. You are his and nothing can separate you from his love. That has been shown to you in Jesus Christ and comes to you every day in the blessings of God, including the very body and blood of that Jesus given and shed for you to guarantee that it is indeed going to be a blessed, blessed journey to an eternity that is assured. Amen.
And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen. We rise and sing together the offertory.
we continue with the liturgy of communion. The Lord be with you.
Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto everlasting life. Amen.